Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry, my room is really messy right now. I just got back from a trip to Boston and I'm putting everything back. So after recent events, um, ranging from, you know, Logic Song, the Logan Paul saga, and recent suicides in the news, I figured that this was a good time to talk about um, what I do on the weekends. I'm a suicide hotline operator. So basically I take the suicide hotline calls, you know, what you hear, the number you hear in the Logic music video, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is where I'm at. Um, essentially I do this in four hour shifts every week and I work with an incredible group of people and I just wanted to answer the most common questions that I get and you know any questions people have when they call because it's a very scary thing to do and it it does require a lot of courage what I do is I'll pick up the phone I have no idea who's gonna be on the other end and it is absolutely terrifying you know it can range from a two minute to 50 minute call you know i think my longest call was a little over an hour it can be anyone who is just calling about their friend and they don't really know what to do or someone who is actively acting on a suicide the first question I always get asked is, how did you get started? I was really interested in helping people going through suicidal thoughts, loss of suicide, and depression. Everyone always asks me like what my personal gain is from this, and I'm like, I just kind of wanted to do it to help people. Like, is that so weird? You go through this pretty rigorous interview process, and it's... Well, it was about 10 weeks of weekend training. It ranges from just learning about mental illnesses, how to pick up the phone, um, HIPAA rules, and then just getting into practice calls. And you learn so much about how to help people who are in this state. And, you know, I went through a serious bout of depression and I still get bad days, but I was never truly suicidal. The biggest thing when someone you know is feeling suicidal is to talk about it and to ask them about it and not try to help them with all the answers. The truth is, is that there is no one single answer. The most important thing is to help people in the darkness and be in that darkness with them. And I think we, as people, get so afraid that someone's gonna immediately act on it that they're gonna like go do something crazy and that's seriously not the case when someone is suicidal they just want to talk to someone without feeling like a crazy person so the next question is what happens on a call the biggest thing that i think people don't understand is that we're people too and it's scary for us too and we're just here to have a conversation and this is to help people in immediate crisis and my goal is to be someone that you can talk to completely anonymously without judgment and about anything some people think i'm going to be like your personal nsa agent and i'm going to write everything about you and i'm going to be you know knowing all these things and reporting all these things and it's it's really just about talking to you and getting you in a safe space and, and finding a way to help you feel better and just provide momentary relief. I'll calculate your risk based off of answering questions. You know, I'll figure out if someone has a plan, has, um, you know, their method, has the time, or someone could just be thinking about it. And those are two vastly different situations. The most important thing is to listen and not be providing all the answers. The call is not about us. I could sit there and be like, oh, well, you know, I was depressed for a while and this and that and that, but that would take away their importance. And my job is to make you feel better and to help you. A lot of people have been asking me about the Logan Paul controversy and it was an act that stemmed completely from immaturity and ignorance 
I can't speak for the Japanese culture. I'm not Japanese, you know, about what he did in the city, but in terms of what he did in the forest was unacceptable. I saw that video not only as something that was super, super insensitive, but also, you know, ja Japan has such a high suicide rate and, and that was one person who didn't have someone to talk to and didn't have someone to rely on and to help them and that was what really made me sad was that you know that person experienced so much pain that they were blinded by the fact that there were possibly people that could help him when you get hit with depression it completely blinds you from everything good in your life and that's what i think people don't realize is that depression is not just being sad it's like you know you don't feel and it's so tiring and you're so exhausted that the only thing that you think can cure it is dying by suicide the next thing that has been insane is logic song we see a 30 to 50 percent increase in calls from the logic song it's really cool what he's doing and i think that he didn't realize it would have such an impact that you know our call center would be like oh my god there's so many people calling right now but i think people finally felt like there was some sort of glimmer of hope people often ask me what the hardest calls for me to take are and that is teens who have parents who neglect them. There are so many teens who call and they need someone to talk to and I am literally the only person that will believe that they're going through what they're going through. It shows how broken the mental health system is in a way and the stigma with mental health and um, you know I'm able to provide them with resources, with therapy, with a teen line that they can talk to but I mean if you're a parent please don't be afraid to talk to your kids. People fail to realize that there is so much good that needs to be done in this world and they just hope that the universe will provide it and it's our job to use the free time we have to be a good person and to help people. And it's made me a better person. It's made me um, understand mental, my mental illness more. I hope that this video helped I know a lot of people are really nervous to call the hotline and I hope that this helped you feel a little more familiar with it. You can always call, it's 24 seven. Someone will always pick up and someone will always be there to listen. Do we get pranks? Yes, it's really fucking annoying and it's really rude, but I believe karma's a bitch, so. <laughs> the hardest part about all of this is not taking it home with you. There are so many people that I've stopped during a suicide attempt that I have had to intervene with. There are people who were abused by their parents. There are people who didn't have any friends, who were big, strong, manly men that were crying on the phone to me, and I think about them often. I have to trust that I did my job, and I have to trust that I gave them enough resources and that they'll be okay. And I hope that this wasn't boring and that it was educational, but you can always ask me questions below, and I will try to answer as many questions as you have. Please ask them in the comments, and I hope this helps. If you guys want to be a suicide hotline or crisis hotline operator, I'll also include that information in my comments below and you know I hope that this shed some light on what it's like to actually pick up those calls and to be there for people I really hope that this opens up your mind to how to approach someone who's feeling suicidal and um, yeah I love you all and I hope that you guys have a good day and I know this was a downer but my next video I promise is happy and um, you guys are great, and I don't know what else to say, but bye guys, love you.